Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to return it to Aberdeen in Scotland which is a city special to me for various reasons and one of these of course is Brewdog. So for this one we are going to go and try one of their prototype beers from 2015. I think these were released in November or maybe December 2015. I can't quite remember on that one but the first one we're going to try out of the four today is the Session IPL and this is actually the first year that they've released these without kind of proper names if you like. They've just named them for what they are rather than calling them by what they actually would call them if they were released. So kind of cool actually but this beer it should be a really interesting one. This one actually didn't win the contest but it was rated at 93 overall on rate beer and 100 within the style so that tells me it should be a pretty damn awesome beer and I have to admit that I love these kind of craft takes on lager beers for example Shehalian from Harveston and also Caesar Augustus and Pavlov's Dog from Williams Brothers those are two of my probably go-to session beers so I really love these kind of craft takes on lager beers so very interested to see how Brewdog have turned this one out but anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery very quickly quickly since we've done many brew dog reviews for you before but if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below the brewery website the link to my other brew dog reviews all the usual social media and if you do want to see more beer reviews do just subscribe to the channel so anyway very briefly a little bit about brew dog so as i've told you many a time brew dog were founded back in 2007 by two guys james watt and martin dickey their first brewery was in fraserburgh in the very northeast corner of scotland but more recently they've moved their main brewing operations to a new facility in Ellen, which is closer to the city of Aberdeen. And they're also working on opening up a second brewery in Columbus, Ohio, over in America. These guys, of course, are known for being very experimental and particularly at one point for their strong beers as well. And they're largely inspired by the American craft brewing renaissance. They often cite Stone Brewing Company as being one of their main influences. And you can really see that coming out in some of their beers. Punk IPA, for example, you can really get that kind of Stone Brewing Company feel to it. But they've got several brew pubs throughout the UK these days. The first of them opened, I believe, back in 2010 it was. I was there on the first night for their home bar in Aberdeen. Since then, they've spread all throughout Scotland and the rest of the UK. And they've got several international sites now. Brazil, Japan, uh, Finland, Sweden, Norway. I think they're looking at Denmark. They're all over the place now, so there's many opportunities for you to try brew dog beers. But what's really cool about these guys is their kind of business model. They have the equity for punk scheme where people like you and I can buy into the brewery and you get an unlimited or a, a lifetime discount, I guess I should say, at the bars and in the shop as well. And this is how they funded a lot of their infrastructure development, like new bars, new tanks for the brewery and all of this sort of thing. It's a really interesting model and they have, of course, released a book on that recently. And they've also released the do-it-yourself dog as well, which is a, a book that shows you how to kind of mimic all of the recipes that they've done so as you can see a very kind of pioneering brewery they've done a lot of cool stuff and i'm sure there's much more cool stuff to come from them so if you haven't already go and try some of the brew dog beers these guys are the largest independently owned scottish craft brewery these days and you know they're a pretty massive company in terms of craft beer these days so make sure you do check them out and of course every year they have special beers like these ones the prototype series and basically they usually pick three or four different beers it just depends on the year and they do these and they let the fans vote for them and essentially the one that you enjoy the most becomes a headliner for next year so they released these beers at the end of 2015 and of course the headliner came out at the start of 2016 so this is the first of the 2015 prototype beers so this one we'll get on to the tasting now this one is a 4.4 percent india pale lager or dry hop lager as they've put it on here it's the session ipl session india pale lager it says on the side here that it's got pilsner malts and dextrin and the hops in here are chinook amarillo simcoe etc and mosaic so it should be really nice best before the second of the 12th 2016 so it's well in date standard brew dog bottle cap on this one i'll just let you see that before we open it up and yeah usual brew, uh, brew dog prototype labels on this one so we'll get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting here really looking forward to this one but yeah we've actually got a very nice summer's day here in loons today i've had to shut all my blinds and turn the artificial lights on so that i can film the review for you it feels a little bit a DOS house at the moment but I'm sure the beer will kind of make up for that. Just sugar up the last little bit and get more of a head on it and there you are. Now you can see that looks like a really nice lager beer actually. That 
bright yellow colour on that looks really, really beautiful. So as you can see, it's a nice pale, hazy golden straw. You can smell some of the juicy fruit characters coming off this one as you pour it out. For me, it's the kind of citra hop notes, those juicy tropical fruits that are standing out on this one so far. You can see if I put my fingers behind the beer, there is a degree of transparency to it, but it is fairly opaque in colour. I think a bright yellow golden straw is a good way to describe this one. There's a half finger of a frothy white head there, some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there. Overall a very nice looking beer. So let's have a look at the aroma then and we'll see how we get on. Yeah, so without sugaring this beer up you would pick out everything that you would think with these hops that are in this one. There's a good bit, there's a little bit of grapefruit in there which I would think would come from the Chinook in this one. You can pick up some of the passion fruit notes, which would be Simcoe in this case. And there's some of the juicier tropical fruit too, which of course is the Citra. And if you sugar up a little bit, you can start to pick out a more citrusy note. There is a little bit of orange in this one, which will come from the Amarillo. But for me, that's a lot more subtle. Definitely a little bit more subtle. You can pick up a little bit of earthy, character too. Just a teeny teeny little bit. You can feel that mixing with the malt base in this one. And that of course is more from the mosaic hop if I remember correctly. But the other, the tropical fruits in this one, apart from the grapefruit and the uh, and the sort of passion fruit in there that's going on, you can get a little bit of peach, maybe just a wee touch of mango or something like that. That's these kind of juicy esters coming out from the citra hop. The citra hop of course if you want a really di um, kind of diverse, I guess you would say, and complex tropical fruit flavour, the Citra Hop is the one that you want to go for. But it smells really nice in comparison to other brew dog aromas that you're going to come across. This one is a little bit more subdued, but of course when it's a lager beer rather than one of the IPAs or things like that, it's exactly what you would expect. So yeah, it's a nice kind of sessionable smell in lager beer. There's the fruity character to it is very nice. Underneath that you can pick up a little bit of bready and kind of paleo malt on this one. You can smell that Pilsner character coming out underneath this one. The dextrin is probably what's giving it that more bready aroma. But just take a little bit of time to enjoy the aroma of this before you drink it. But we'll get stuck into this one now. So this is the Session IPL India Pale Lager 4.4% from Brewdog's Prototype 2015 range. Let's get stuck into this guy. Slanja. Yeah, you know, that's actually quite a nice beer, nice and sessionable, which exactly is what the name suggests. Yeah, I mean, this is one thing we should talk about a little bit when it comes to these reviews. Brewdog have a good, a good history with lager beers, in my opinion. 77 Lager, the first one that they did was really really nice and for some reason they stopped that one they replaced it with fake lager which for me wasn't as good as 77 and then more recently they've re they've introduced this is lager and I have to admit I really do like that one it's quite floral and quite aromatic a lot of German hop if I remember correctly in that one and it comes across as really nice this one is a bit different than that it's actually similar in feel with the hoppiness but it's just got that little bit more of kind of American hop fruity character to it so it's quite nice and I can see right away why this one is rated quite highly and I have to admit that Brewdog are really good when it comes to lager beers actually generally but when you take more and more of this beer in you can start to pick up more and more of these hoppy characters coming out of this one. It's still light and it's not too kind of dry and bitter on the outside of the palate but you get this nice kind of fruity character. It kind of shows you what you can do with a lager rather than just doing one of these kind of cat piss things that come out of some of the macro breweries if you like. But this is nice. I can see why this one's rated so highly within the uh, the kind of lager beer category on rate beer. It is actually really nice. And to be honest, it's a bit of a shame that Brewdog haven't actually continued this one. You know, this is lager is a good beer, but for me, this one is actually, it's maybe a little bit better than that, to be honest. There's nothing wrong with this is lager, but for me, the kind of American hop aroma and that little bit more fruity character that you get from this one is really quite nice. Well, 
I can see they're trying to go for something a little bit in between an IPA or a pale ale and the lager beer and they've kind of hit that they've actually got that middle ground very well in this one so in fairness it is a little bit different to this as lager but it's equally as good if not a little bit better I remember this as lager being very floral and aromatic and it having quite a bit of citrus in it but overall a very good beer in my opinion too but yeah this is nice so in the middle of the palate you're getting what you would expect you know a typical light kind of pale malt character that just blankets the middle of the tongue that typical kind of pilsner malt mouthfeel but it's quite smooth as you move out towards the edges of the tongue in the back corners there's just a little teeny hint of earthiness there not really very much at all as i said that will come from the mosaic hop as you come further forward you get a little bit more floral aromatic character to this one you can feel a little bit of dryness on the front corners of the palate as you go around that front curve of the tongue you get a little bit of a nice kind of smooth grassy character to the beer if you just go behind the front curve of the palate you get that little oily bubble that you typically get with a lot of beers and that's where the kind of fruity characters are coming out they're actually a little bit more subtle than you would believe from the aroma it does come across this beer as a very very lightly hopped paleo but it works really nicely but if you just kind of concentrate on that little bit behind the front of your tongue you can get some of these tropical fruits in there for me it actually is more the citra hop that's coming out it's quite juicy and it's quite smooth it's not quite as oily as some of the things you would normally expect from the grapefruit side of things I can pick up a little bit of the more orangey amarillo citrus that's kind of founding the backbone to this and then you get the more juicy or maybe slightly peachy or, or mangoey kind of flavours coming out from the, the citra character there's a little bit of the typical maybe slightly gooseberry flavours coming out in this one as well actually for me and the Chinook of course the Chinook will be the one I remember that hop giving you a big floral and almost resinous aromaticity you can really feel that just found it found like having the basis of this beer and the mosaic at the back of the palate too but obviously the other ones the Simcoe you can get a little bit of that the kind of smoother fruits in there as well but for me it really is the citra and the amarillo that are making up most of the uh, the tropical fruit character in this one probably a little bit of the Simcoe in there as well just a little tiny bit of that passion fruit there's not really any kind of big sour grapefruit in this one for me it is more of a kind of citra juicy almost that gooseberry passion fruity slightly mangoish quality that's coming out of this beer but that said you know it is a very very nice lager beer this one I can see why it's so well rated on rate beer mm. but yeah in terms of the mouthfeel light bodied as you would expect no doubt about that carbonation is quite crisp it's not too um, prominent if you like but it's nice and smooth and it makes the beer nice and sessionable you've got a good bit of hoppy character to this one the hoppy character for me is quite smooth you've got a little bit of an oily kind of juicy fruitiness there and the malt base is really quite smooth actually there's a little bit of dryness builds as you move into the aftertaste on the edge of the tongue but overall you know it's a light nice sessionable beer not too bitter just as good as the as if not better than the this is lager beer in my opinion but it just has a little bit more of that kind of fruity American hop character coming from it whereas I remember the this is lager having quite a sharp almost citrusy feel to it but leaning more towards that German noble hop character but that said both very good beers and this one I can see why it's so highly rated it's a bit of a shame that this one probably won't see the light of day again because for me it is a very strong lager beer and like I said I do enjoy these craft takes on lager beer so yeah another very very solid beer from Brewdog it kind of finds the middle ground between an American pale ale and one of these kind of craft takes on a lager beer so a very very solid beer only disappointing thing about it is that you're probably not going to find it again from Brewdog but very cool to have tried it and I hope you guys have enjoyed this review so as always if you have tried this beer for yourself do let me know your own thoughts on it in the comment section below always interesting to hear from you guys that are watching the videos until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff go and check out my social media things in the description below and I hope you guys enjoy these reviews that I'm going to do for you of the Brewdog prototype range of 2015. There's another three of them to go, so make sure you tune in for that, and I'll catch you soon with the next review. Make sure you go and try some Brewdog beers from where I used to study in Aberdeen in Scotland. Slange just now.